mad. Everybody ready? Great. Thank you for coming out today. Today we're here to announce the arrest of a suspect in a heinous sexual assault case that happened last Wednesday in Annandale. Speaking today will be our own Chief Davis. Here we have Chief Jake Jacoby of the Northern Virginia Community College Police Department. Our own Captain Spital of our Violent Crimes Division and Director Fayez with our Victim Services Division. Chief. Thanks, Katie. Good afternoon. Uh, you will hear today about two attacks on women, one in Fairfax County and one on the campus of the Northern Virginia Community College. Our victim is a 59-year-old woman, and the on-campus victim is a 20-year-old young woman. Our shared perpetrator is a monstrous 23-year-old man whose crime in Fairfax County is both abhorrent and inhumane. I often cringe at self-congratulatory police press conferences following a significant act of prevention or, as in this case, a significant case closure that swiftly brings a predator like this one to justice. Today is not about our collaborative efforts. It's not about our local law enforcement partnerships and not about the great police work and investigative work. Those are givens and things our community simply expects from us and we routinely deliver. Today is about two sexual assault victims and a staunch reminder why it is still necessary to have a sexual assault awareness month, one that begins in just a few days and lasts throughout the month of April. In the meantime, Kevin Lopez Alton is off the streets and facing criminal charges that I trust will keep him behind bars for the rest of his life. Kevin. 
Thank you, Chief. A man is in custody after two brutal and horrifying attacks on Northern Virginia women this past week. This past Wednesday, a man forced his way into an Annandale business. The suspect knocked on the door and was told that the business was closed, but he continued to knock. The business owner opened the door to explain that the business was closed, but the offender pushed his way inside and held the victim captive inside her own business for several hours. Throughout this nightmare, the suspect sexually assaulted the victim repeatedly and threatened to kill her if, he didn't do, if she didn't do exactly what he told her to do. The victim found a moment when the suspect's attention was diverted and bravely took that opportunity to escape. She ran to a nearby business and she asked for someone to call for help. Officers arrived on scene and they immediately contacted detectives from our sex crimes unit and our crime scene section to assist with the investigation. Detectives located an enormous amount of evidence to include fingerprints that our suspect left behind. Detectives worked nonstop for over 24 hours, just hoping to get a break in this case. While detectives were investigating, they learned that the Northern Virginia, Northern Virginia Community College Police Department was working a separate attack on a separate victim from Thursday night. This victim was a student. The case on campus involved a lone female who was sexually assaulted by a suspect and she courageously fought him off. Detectives from both jurisdictions compared information and determined that they were looking for the same man. On Friday, an officer with the Northern Virginia Community College Police Department received information from detectives on the suspect to include unique tattoos that he had and unique mannerisms that he had and the officer immediately identified a possible suspect from the tattoos and the specific mannerisms. As this information was being tracked down, investigators from our Navarra section of our Cyber and Forensics Bureau analyzed the fingerprints that were lifted at the scene and they compared them directly to the prints of the suspect and we determined that they were an exact match. This past Friday, detectives from both departments coordinated efforts on a manhunt for our suspect, Kevin, Lopez Altan, 24 years of age from Annandale. Lopez Altan is known to hang out in various shopping centers in Annandale. And after learning this, the FCPD saturated the Annandale area looking for Lopez Altan. A short time later, around 1.20 p.m. on Friday, an FCPD sergeant who was in the area located Lopez Altan in the Heritage Center shopping center and he took him into custody. Lopez Altan has been charged by both agencies with a total of 12 violent felony offenses to include numerous counts of rape, attempted rape, abduction, and strangulation. Lopez Altan is being held without bond at the Fairfax County Adult Detention Center. We are thankful for the hard work and dedication of our officers from both agencies, as well as the victim advocates who worked around the clock to ensure the safety of our community. Lastly, I want to recognize the bravery of the two victims whose courage to come forward undoubtedly prevented Lopez Altan from striking again. With that, we'll take any questions. So we believe that these victims were chosen at random by Lopez Altan. Uh, we are still investigating any possible connection that he might have had, but all uh, indication right now shows that it was random. So, so right now, these 12 charges are associated with the charges from Fairfax County Police Department and also from Northern Virginia Community College. Um, but we're always asking to see if the community knows anything. If you know anything about Lopez Altan, we're asking you to please call us. And if you yourself are a victim, please call us uh, so we can know more and we can help you. So at this point, we have, we have no indication that there are other cases out there. But again, if there are any victims, uh, we certainly need to hear from you. Yeah, so uh, 
we, we stopped any further attacks that he may have caused. Um, but certainly, uh, he, he struck two days in a row, and, and we're confident that we prevented other potential victims. Yeah, so there are specific mannerisms that he possessed where uh, when he was walking around, he had his fingers moving in a motion like this at all times, which certainly uh, helped the Northern Virginia Community College police officer to identify him. Is he Aboriginal of Douglas County? He is. He's of Annandale. was not familiar with him being on campus, but he was familiar with him from his previous job. He was a law professor at Northern Justice. He worked for the Sheriff's Department, but that's beside the point. Do you find any significant evidence in this case that he was involved in any other offenses? That has not yet. The officer has not The officer, the officer used to work for the Sheriff's Department. Was he ever physically arrested? So, so the officer who identified uh, the mannerisms is currently a Northern Virginia Community College police officer. He had prior interactions with him while he was a Fairfax County Sheriff deputy. How long ago was that that he had prior interactions with him? That might. Uh, so, do you know how long he was? So, so we, we can certainly get back to you. I'm not sure exactly how long he was a deputy versus how long he's been working for. It sounds like this guy had a history with police. I mean, is that fair to say? His, his criminal history, and you all can look up his criminal history. We don't provide that at press conferences anymore. But he was certainly known to law enforcement, but not extensively. So it, it can't go un, unnoted that the Northern Virginia Community College police officer, um, based on his remembrance of this perpetrator, when he was employed as a deputy sheriff, was absolutely instrumental in breaking this case wide open. Uh, we believe he absolutely positively would have struck again. Uh, we know that from the way he interacted with our detectives. We know that from his demeanor, his disposition. Uh, I would be shocked if there aren't other victims that he's left in his wake. And that's why we want to intentionally solicit any information about him from previous victims or people who know him uh, in the community. These two acts were so brazen, so bold, so daring um, that, that it would be hard for me to believe that he hasn't struck before. For the Fairfax County business incident, were there, is there any other reason that the attorney or Wes had to be closed? Was he acting appropriately to keep himself safe? Yeah, it was closed and he made several efforts to get inside. Uh, they were thwarted by our victim uh, the first couple of occasions, but then he successfully forced his way inside that business, and that's where he spent the next several hours attacking again and again and again our victim. When you say several hours, how many? Se several, up to eight. She's traumatized. She's traumatized, but thankfully she's still here with us. She's very, very brave, like Captain Spital uh, said, very brave woman to, to come forward, to take advantage of an opportunity to escape, uh, but, but she was the victim of a an attack that nobody should ever have to endure. Was yes. She a uh, we're not discussing her status. You know, we have a responsibility to protect her identity, so we're not talking about who she is or exactly where she works uh, in an effort to do just that. Well, I know that I read that you say where, what exactly is she? Is it, in, is it in your client's suite? Yeah, it's, it's at a business place. That's, that's about as far as I can go. Again, the, the, the main um, message here is we, we took a monstrous predator off, off the street. And if you want to see pure evil, uh, take, a look, take a look at that picture of, of Kevin Lopez Alton. Uh, and again, our, our sketch artist, the best I've ever worked with, uh, an uncanny resemblance in, in her sketch uh, to, our, to our predator in this case. She was a student at the college. I'm sorry. <clears throat> she was a student at the college. And how was she able to, to get away and not report this to the police? Well, at, at, at the time that it occurred, there was another student who was close by um, who made himself available to assist her, and the subject ran off. Was this in, was it night? Was it dark, I assume? It was in the evening. It was Thursday evening at 8.50 p.m.
uh, on the Annandale campus. From the college's perspective, is the police department doing anything else differently as a result of this incident? Well, I, whenever something like this happens, we always review our protocols and procedures. Um, we have extra patrols out around the campus. We work with our local partners in all our jurisdictions uh, to keep the campuses safe. So, so, so to our knowledge and through our investigation, we have not uncovered uh, any other reports uh, about him. But a again, if anybody has seen him and does want to contact the police department to report anything that they have seen with, with Lopez Altan, we certainly want to hear from them. Yeah, Matt, so, sometimes um, it's, it, it's natural for us to explain evil behavior like this. Uh, we look for a reason. Uh, there is no reason beyond he is evil personified. He's brutal in his attacks on, on women. He's relentless in his attacks on women. And the fact that we were able to literally stop him from offending again and again and again is something that um, local law enforcement is tasked with, and, and, and we're, we're proud that we were able to put him in handcuffs. But we can't begin to explain criminal misconduct like his, uh, evil criminal misconduct. Um, I, I, wish I, I wish I had an answer for you, but what he did was unspeakable. Is it your understanding he was working alone in these attacks? Yes. Anyone else? No, no, I'm not sure why they would be, unless you have a follow-up to that. Yeah, okay. And, you know, one of the reasons why we've asked Director Sally Fayez of our Victim Services Division to, to be here is because after this, uh, after these brazen uh, acts of, of brutality, sheer brutality, we are about to go into um, a, a month, a month of April, where, where we, we pause and recognize the importance of, of law enforcement, detectives, patrol officers, and victims of, of sexual assault. So I'll ask uh, uh, Director Fayez to say a, a word on that, and if you don't have any further questions, we'll, we'll conclude. Did he act alone or looking for another suspect? No, this is a sole, a, a sole person that we have captured. Uh, we do not believe he was acting in concert with anyone. He did this by himself to two women one in Fairfax County and one on the campus of the Northern Virginia Community College. Uh, we have zero reason to believe he acted with anyone. Uh, but again, and this is probably the fourth time we've messaged this request to our greater community, if anyone has any information about him harming other women or involved in any other crimes, please come forward and, and help us continue to hold him accountable uh, for his crimes. Um, as the chief mentioned, April is uh, the start of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, to the victims that are out there that um, we are working with, we, as the chief said, we are, we are proud of you. Um, you are courageous. You are brave. And it's important to understand that um, this doesn't end today. The police department's going to stand by you, and the advocates are going to stand by you. The detectives are going to stand by you. Um, so we recognize that you are watching, and, and we're with you. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming out today. We will be posting all the details of this case on our blog online, and you can follow us at Fairfax County PD for any further updates to this. Thanks so much.